Hi there, my name is Kendrick, and today I get to interview Michael. So, Michael, welcome. Hi, Kendrick. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice meeting you too. Uh, so, Michael, could you please let everyone know what your full type is? Sure. I am an ESFJ jumper, um, double feminine, play, consume, blast, sleep, blast. Gotcha. And uh, you got your social type as well? Yes, I'm a social type four. Okay, sweet. I'm just laughing because we just talked about it. Like, <laughs> I you know, immediately forgot. Like, you know, you're feminine sensory, <laughs> right? So, you know. Um, anyways, uh, so what did you think and how did you feel when you got your typing results? Uh, yeah, so um, I was initially quite surprised that I was um, typed as a jumper. I think initially I typed myself as an ENFP, like most ESFJ, I suppose. Um, but um, in my typing results, I kind of put myself down as F-E-S-I at the end. Um, so there was something that I I was reviewing, something that I spotted that I thought maybe I'm not F-I, um, but F-E. Um, so yeah, it was kind of kind of a weird realization to to see um, ESFJ jumper um, after thinking that I'm intuitive for so long. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy. I, I feel like I just wanted an answer, um, and yeah, got there in the end. Well, you are intuitive. You are F E N E. You are the intuitive ESFJ. So you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. So so when I thought that I was F E S I, um, so E S F J, um, that's when I started to realize, okay, um, there's a strong pull of F E. And because initially, you know, through all my my learnings of um MBTI and personality typing, I just thought any ESFJ would be a sensor first. Um so so that's how I got to that conclusion. Right, right. No, that, that makes sense. Um, all right, dude. Uh, why don't we go over your parts and uh, and just feel free to share how you personally experience it. Um, I'll throw some stuff your way as well. Um, if I see something that uh, you know that, that could be added. So the first one um is obviously your first animal, F E N E. So you are lead N F. Okay. Um, so when you thought you were an E N F P uh before, it kind of makes a lot of sense because um in Myers Briggs land they don't have F E N E right so like like that kind of E S F J being intuitive is is not available so of of course it makes sense if you're a feeler and intuitive, um you know like you only have a few and you're extroverted then your only option is really like E N F P right so uh so it makes perfect sense um so uh it's also interesting your time is very close close to Ryan Reynolds, um so uh so you know you you could have been Deadpool you know but anyways. Uh, <laughs> But anyhow, so uh, being lead any FE, what have you seen for yourself that you're doing when it comes to interacting with a tribe? It's also double activated. So, you know, so you're doing that back and yeah. forth NF with, with people, essentially. Yeah. Uh, so how do you personally experience that uh, from your own personal perspective? Yeah, like like I said, there's a, there's a massive pull um, in terms of just taking in the vibe of uh, of the environment so so whatever environment i find myself in i feel like the emotions the vibe how everyone's feeling is is, is the first thing that i'm attracted to and um, i'm pretty much focused on that all day every day uh, so so that's how i would describe it yeah and because it's um it's because it's NF, it's not SF. It's you're you're kind of like gathering the vibe more than than the actual like emotions that they're feeling. Like, like I remember right. I was watching like a Ryan Reynolds interview, and then um they gave him some chocolate bar, and uh you know him and uh, Hugh Jackman were eating it, and then uh, Ryan Reynolds goes up to the tribe. It's like, hey, can you can someone please give us like more louder plastic covering for this chocolate bar? You know, it's like it's like the the vibe was like. You know, it's like very annoying, right? Like the, the the rippling sound, but it's kind of funny. So, do you see yourself like kind of making fun of people in that kind of aspect? You know, especially when you're comfortable with them. I know I understand you are a decider, so um, yeah, 
So you have to be yeah. with a person first before you start uh, making fun of them. Uh, but you are also an EP. You're like an EJ EP. So you're not like, you, you are a chaotic version, like a, almost like a troublemaking version of this EJ type, right? So like, yeah. how do you see yourself, uh, you know, creating chaos with the tribe once you're comfortable with them and, you know, they're your friends and or, or family member, you know, like how do you see yourself causing some chaos in that, in that, uh, in that aspect? Um. Yeah, I definitely resonate with uh, you know the, the that that joke that Ryan Reynolds uh, said. I, I think what I do more so is kind of prod people and kind of like, um, like I would say, uh, point of towards um, maybe some values or something that that I think this person might like or I think this person might dislike and make fun of that. So. Um, yeah, I, d I definitely do that with with my friends and, and close ones where I'd be like, hey, uh, look at this. I know you didn't like this, but isn't that amazing or that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I do tend to do that. Um, yeah, quite often. Yeah. And another thing that um, the NF play does is it likes to uh, know when it comes to engaging with the tribe. Uh, what the tribe is up to, you know, what like what they're passionate about, what their purpose and meaning are, what are their goals. Um, I I, I remember when you sent me an email and I was telling you about my travels. You're like, oh, I found that really fascinating, and it's like, oh, that's your NF play. You're like really like into like uh, just painting with people and seeing like, oh, what are you up to? Oh, that's your motivation, and it's like like a, a quite a big source of fascination uh for for your specific type. Uh, can you share a little bit about your, uh, you know, how you enjoy doing that, like with people and stuff? And actually, it's a good thing. Actually, it's a really strong animal, in my opinion, just because, uh, you know, it it makes you very likable because, like, you are actually genuinely curious what people are up to, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think I do find enjoyment in seeing um, people's interests and and people's passion. Um, I think you know when you explain to me that you know you're traveling all over the country uh it's amazing you know I, i'd want to know more like what you know how many countries have you been to and and you're right like the the curiosity is 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 genuine um but i also get this feeling that sometimes it might be taken as disingenuous so so i kind of hold myself back at times i i think that this ingenuous aspect of it could possibly be um, because it's not personal because it's in a play position, you know? So you enjoy doing it, but it's not personal. Yeah. You know, um, it's kind of like my NT, right? Uh, you know, like a lot of people with NT sleep things like, oh, oh my God, Kendrick's like doing this NT stuff, you know? And he, he thinks like, oh, you're giving out so much like, truths and stuff. I'm like, no, it's not personal. It's it's just it's just play. I don't like, I, I can do it all day. And uh, the problem solving aspect uh, with a tribe or trying to figure out something with a tribe is non-personal, like absolutely non-personal. Uh, I enjoy it, but it's non-personal, you know, but I, I still enjoy it. Like I, if I could help someone uh, solve a problem, then obviously that, that would uh, bring me some joy. Um, all right. Let's talk about your second animal. Uh, your second animal, uh, as we're already kind of talking about is NT. Um, and uh, it's not only NT, it's double masculine NT consume. Okay. So, you're going to be very aggressive at this uh, animal. This is double masculine. Um, essentially, your consume is used for um, finding, uh, researching a solution to problems. Um, so when you come across like an issue, then that's when your consume kicks in. Can you share a little bit about like that process and like how, uh, you know, when you, once you know, it's like, okay, it's time to, time to go deep dive in this consume, like this anti-consume. I, I I feel like NT consume is kind of like uh, putting puzzle pieces together. Um, it is double masculine, so it's quite aggressive. Yeah, I kind of see that even just, you know, learning about objective personality, um, trying to figure out the cognitive functions, trying to figure out the animals, I had to kind of make notes uh, of myself in terms of just understanding the different definitions, um, understanding where, like, let's say if any is at the top, what that looks like and what the definition of that is. Um, 
so yeah, I tend to, I don't know if that links in with the sleep, but I tend to kind of build frameworks and constructs um, with, with the NT consume. Gotcha. Um, another aspect of anti consume is external self awareness and also the image that you're trying to project to the tribe. So, for the external image um, and also that self external self awareness, do you see yourself projecting an image that you are smart and you're good at figuring things out first and foremost? Oh yeah, for sure. For and then sure. Secondly, yeah. because you do have that uh, activated in a savior state in an external self-awareness perspective, it's almost like you become a ghost and you can see yourself from a third person perspective. And you are aware when you are not coming across as smart, but coming across as dumb instead. Do you see yourself doing that? And you can like kind of course correct when that happens? Yeah, that's the kind of self-criticism that I I feel uh, within myself um, when I'm, yeah. When I'm doing something or saying something, I'm like, oh, Michael, you're being stupid there. And then and then I kind of course correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And is that important for you to come across as intelligent to the tribe? Or and obviously you have TI at the bottom and it's gonna be like, you know, very personal, but also like a demon state, right? So I, I wanna hear what but you have NT consume in a saver state. So there's a lot of contradiction happening uh, with within you at one time. So I uh, just want to hear what, uh, how you personally, uh, you know, juggle all these different, um, you know, factors. Uh, yes, it is important <laughs> for sure. It's important to come across as intelligent, more so competent um, than anything. I think when it when it comes to like my my own perception of myself, I, I would. Like I'd have to filter myself to make sure that, okay, don't say anything stupid. Um, and yeah, just just listening to, you know, after having the 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 audio tapes from Dave, uh, he mentioned something about my TI being triggered on two fronts, um, meaning that, um, you know, when there's when someone's like, oh, you're stupid, or when I'm getting insults that I'm I'm triggered by low TI and I'm triggered by the fact that it's another person. So it's kind of like a double whammy. So uh, in order to kind of combat that throughout life, I, I've noticed myself being very, very aware of what I say, how I say things. Um, and yeah, very conscious of that. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Like you're walking on eggshells almost like, you know, yeah, until I'm not. I think until the line is crossed, um, I feel like I can, I would say that I think my type is quite sensitive and I would see myself as quite sensitive. Um, but then there is another side that I feel like I'm a bit more averse to, which is maybe like the anger side, the, the suppressed anger that that I don't want other people to see. That's a bit more private. But But in terms of like, you know, if 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 my TI gets attacked, I think it's more likely for me to to go within my shell and 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 show vulnerability over anger, for example. Right, yeah. right. Um, I remember they did type um Brendan Fraser, and he's like an ENTP, but kind of very similar to you. I think he's also, I don't know if he's, I don't remember if he was blast last or sleep last, but um he was also lead um NF play like you. And uh, I remember Dave saying that uh, the NF plays are the most sensitive uh, personality type. Like you guys are ultra sensitive uh, just because you're picking up the, the, the vibe of the tribe all day long and it's, you can't yeah. turn it off. And it's kind of, I, I can imagine it, it being quite overwhelming, you know, having all these emotions from, like, you know, all, all fronts uh, coming your way. Um, yeah. Yeah. Although that would make you really good though, as like a, you know, like a party host or something, because like you, you know what the vibe is like, and when something's up, you can co course correct right away. Especially, and uh, I'll, I'll and we'll go, we'll go back to your um competence thing, because that's your sleep, right? So we'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the perfect transition now to your blast, the SF blast, double feminine SF blast. So, 
you know, like, like as I mentioned, like you would be perfect at like, you know, at events where like you have to make sure that like the vibe is right. And like you have enough SF blast to like nudge the tribe in the right direction just to kind of course correct the vibe. So it's like going the right the right way. Um, but where do you personally see yourself uh, using a double feminine SF blast to 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 kind of just gently guide the tribe towards the, the correct behavior, you know, the appropriate behavior to to just just to make sure that, the, you know, the vibe is correct, you know. Uh, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be aggressive with this because it's double feminine, but uh, you do have it activated, so it's not missing, and you will use it uh, in a very soft, soft way. Yeah, uh, I do have an example of maybe SF Blast, and that's probably a couple of years back when I used to play uh, FIFA football on online with my friends, and and there would be you know you'll just have banter, you want to joke around but I always like I'm super sensitive if someone gets bullied for not being good at the game so I tend to then kind of play the the savior role as hey guys you know let's not let's not let's not bully let's let's focus let's win this game and then I easily become the target so and then I get triggered and and then I get upset so so I feel like I am gently like I noticed uh, that that more recently that I gently kind of like guide even though you know it's all a joke it's all in jest but I I personally I feel uncomfortable when someone gets bullied or you know um, uh, so I kind of direct the attention towards me so I don't know if that that might be a SF kind of vibe vibe check that's going on yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like the fact that you kind of nudge the tribe to, you know, be nice to to to, to your friend. I was getting bullied. Uh, yeah. That is definitely as a blast. Although, uh, when you were saying that, I was just thinking about um, the ENTPs and the ISFJs, and um, I don't think they would course correct. I don't think they would use that SF blast in that situation, uh, just because they're double deciding. Um, mm. So they know part of the vibe is being a being a being a dick essentially you know um you know especially when you're close friends and you guys are just being uh you know a jerk to each other and it, it's, it's just part of the deal and you know like the entps even though they do have that uh they can course correct because they have the same uh, uh quadra seal so they have access to sf blast especially the isfjs um but the isfjs will actually yeah. use the sf blast to gaslight people in a fun way kind of sounds horrible but <laughs> But they'll actually do it, you know, but in a playful state also at the same time, just because it's, uh, you know, they're still double deciding. Um, so I guess at the end of the day, um, you know, um, they know someone has done that done that to them before, like the bullying to them. And then when they're bullying, right. people, they kind of see it's like, it's just kind of like, it's like the truth. It's like part of the deal, right? It's just the part of the deal when you're with people. Someone's going to make fun of you and you're going to make fun of them. And if you can dish it, you should be able to take it too, right? You know, so it's, it's, you know what that's I mean? it yeah I think it's probably more so I'm I'm probably more self-aware of that when there's a new person joining the group I like see. people that I don't know then I'm like I don't know what your you know what your threshold is so so yeah that's that's when that happens but with people that are a bit more that I'm, I'm familiar with like I kind of understood that even though I, I would still at times kind of uh, do that just because I've I, it just makes me feel uncomfortable. Right. No, that that makes total sense. Um, I think it would it would just be hard for you just because of yeah the NF play. Um, I think for me personally though, when um I get to a new situation with new people, um, I, I am a little bit tippy toey around them at first just because I have the double feminine uh, play. Um, but I then when the double deciding kicks in, the first thing that comes to my mind is like, oh, you can't be too nice because then you're gonna get pigeon <laughs> you're gonna get pigeonholed into that nice box. You have to be a little bit of an asshole too, like it kind of like being a double decider. Like when you talk to a double decider, um, they don't trust you unless you insult them, right? Like because because they know there's something fake about like just uh, yeah. pure compliments. So you you the moment you so you have to give uh, a double decider like a compliment and an insult like like right after another, you know. It doesn't have to be like a big insult. It could be like a small insult, right? You know. And like just make fun of them, and then it's like okay, now they trust you, you know, because like if you're all compliments are like something, this person's not trustworthy. This person has ulterior motives, you know. That's kind of like the the thought process from a double decider uh, perspective. So, um, so it, it's good to know the types, obviously, when you're talking to people. Like I did notice with deciders, you can't you can't give them any jabs until like you actually know them, 
Like you can't do it on the front end. Like you actually have to have like a, a, an existing relationships before you can jab them, which is kind of like, oh, that takes so long. We have to get there first. I'm like, geez, you know? Um, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Because I guess like my first perception of of people is what, what they're, you know, I'm focused on what, um, what their values are. And, you know, if, if insults come, I might easily misjudge um, the person's character or, you know, you know, yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it does take a while for me to kind of let go of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, even for me personally, like a lot of the friends I've made in life, I hated them when I first met them because they're, they, they might have, they might have like double masculine play or something. They're just really aggressive with people and really like, um, you know, like don't care about other people's feelings. But then, you know, obviously being a double decider, I, you know, when people are being a jerk to me, I always think to myself, because, uh, you know, part of double design is like looking at the tribe and looking at itself. So I look back to myself, I'm like, have I been an asshole before? And then I, if the answer is yes, I'm like, okay, it's fine. Cause the, 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 that's fine. Cause like I've, I've done it before. So I give them a pass, you know, but like for you, for example, like, um, have you ever asked yourself that question? Like, have you been, have I been a jerk before? And if, you know, and then if the answer is yes, like do you give yourself a pass that, you know, okay, you know, it's kind of okay. It's just part of the deal, you know? Yeah, I, I, I think I do, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think I do see myself as someone that's, um, that's kind or at least polite because I think kind is a bit more genuine and polite is more having my cards close to my chest right um, um but yeah if if you were to ask me have i thought have i been an asshole before a jerk before yeah probably i don't think that comes into my equation with other people um to be honest kendrick <laughs> yeah 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 no worries dude yeah no i just i want to hear from your perspective so it's it's all mm. good um, well, that's perfect because then we can uh, jump into the last animal now here. Um, oh. ST sleep. This one is a biatch for like oh. for the ESFJs. Like I feel so bad uh, for the ESFJs having this last animal and uh, mainly because how personal it is. Like being competent is so personal uh, for, for ESFJs. And, you know, um, like my girlfriend, for example, she had this double masculine ESFJ coworker, um, you know, and... Um, she won't ask for help when it comes to doing her work because she feels like the people will think she's incompetent, right? And um, and and like for my girlfriend, she'll ask help no problem. She's an INTJ, and um, it's like who cares? Like the more people, the more I get help, the better my work is. So when the finished product comes out, then obviously you know it, I, I come across as competent, and then I can high five my teammate too for helping me. So it's like a you know you, you there's like a bonding uh process involved uh, just, uh, with it but like the ESFJs they seem to be like protective of the work right but then you know uh, as you know like when you don't get that tribe feedback when it comes to uh, how your work could be further enhanced then oh. you're missing out uh, the opportunity to make your work even better than what it could be you know what I mean so um, but how do you feel about that like work being uh, the, the the work being personal and like don't not wanting help from people yeah, I I resonate with that. Um, not asking for help, uh, and also maybe th the feeling that comes with that is, oh, I should know, I sh I should be able to deal with that. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how that is. St. Is it is 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 that is that just sleep in general or? I'm not quite sure where, where that fits in. Well, ST in general is competence. So like if you look at the ISTPs and the ESTPs and, you know, they're known for like being mechanics or handyman or and whatnot. And, uh, you know, when you're doing like hands-on work, the first thing that people think is like, oh, this person's competent. They know, they know stuff. Like they know how to do mm. stuff, right? Mm. And it makes sense for those guys because they have ST consumed. So the external self uh, image that they are trying to project to the tribe is that of competence. Right. Although what's personal for them is the NT, so it's a little bit uh, a little bit opposite of you of you, uh, or anyone in, within your quadra, right? So, um, so 
Yeah, so SD is definitely uh, competent. So you your yours is sleep. So anything that is in a sleep position is personal, right? For me, it's SF. That's personal. But I'm learning now as I get older, like, oh, I don't want to ask for help for like fashion advice and all that stuff, but kind of have to because, uh, you know, I'm not good at this thing and it's not going to improve if I don't get feedback. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning now. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And I'm like a little bit tippy toey too, because I'm like a little bit like uh, vulnerable when it comes to the SF, you know. So I know it sounds ridiculous. You're like, of course, why would it, why would it be weird just asking for like fashion tips or like asking for like how to like I don't know make something look nice? Why why would that be like we why would that be weird, you know? But like for 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 you guys maybe or, or like the anyone with FE right? But like for someone with SF sleep like me, that's personal, right? But then but the ST that's not personal to me. I'm like oh whatever, you know. Like so for you that's super personal, and and that I think that's like the magic of OPS. It's like Oh, you you know what's personal to people, so you you can um yeah you know um like when you talk to them, it's 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 easier to be um I guess cognizant of what what uh of how you should uh, proceed, you know. Or although you can use it in a malicious way, because obviously if you know that's personal, then you can attack them too in that in that aspect, right? Like I have an ESFJ friend who's consumable as and I always like kind of make fun of his competence. He gets so upset, like just absolutely raging upset. But we've been friends when we were kids, so I feel like I can get away with it. But he does he does get really mad. Um and I've noticed too with like the ESFJ friends I have, like I this was one guy, uh, I'm actually gonna meet him at the end of the year. We're gonna spend Christmas, me and my girlfriend are gonna spend Christmas with him with him and his wife, um, in uh, Abu Dhabi. And um oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So I remember we me and him, we we traveled together um to Russia. That's before the war, uh, you know. Just, just to explore Moscow. And like, we got lost and he refused to ask for directions. And I'm like, what? who cares? Just ask someone for direction. That, that's so weird. He's like, no, we're not going to, we're not going to ask for directions. I'm like, dude, why are you being so fucking weird with this? Yeah. It, 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 it's a, everyone asks for directions. That's like, yeah, that's not like, what, what can you, can you, uh, can you explain to me why that would be like a, uh, a taboo to do? Like asking for directions. Because, like, obviously you're an ESFJ. Yeah, I, I definitely relate with that. I, I think it's just, like, for me anyway, it's it's more of a thing. You don't want to bother anyone. And then also maybe the person that you're seeing on the roadside, you you don't want to have that bad result of them saying, no, I don't know where, where. you just want to avoid that. You might as well just do it on your own. That's, I think, the sentiment that I feel when when – <laughs> when asking for help and asking for directions that's that's one thing yeah right. that's why i think and maybe you know the the nt nerd uh for me looks at technology as the solution because i don't have to ask anyone i just ask the internet or i ask chat gpt google maps um and try and make sure that i'm competent in those areas so that i can be 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 able to navigate around wherever i am russia or or wherever yeah. Right. I guess you're using the double observing to, to get your answer as, as opposed to, uh, you know, like, cause you're, you can gather and you can organize, right. You have those two functions in the middle, like the NE's gathering and the SI's organizing. So you're using those two right. in the middle to, 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 um, you know, get through life. So you don't bother the tribe essentially, you know, or make, yeah. Mistakes. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the mistakes thing is interesting because um, you know, it's TI. You know, uh, people with TI don't like making mistakes or admitting to mistakes at the same time, even though you you might know you made a mistake. Um, I I I've always seen it as like a survival mechanism because um, you know, if you look at the caveman days, um, if you make a mistake, uh, let's say you eat the wrong like plant, you could you could be dead, right? So it makes sense to to have TI back back in the uh, ancient days because you know there is like um. What's the word I'm looking for here? There is actually like um, like that you could be dead. It's what I'm trying to say like there. There's... Yeah, like a sense of security, I suppose. Like that. That's the main thing in your mind, as um, and you you you're focusing on preserving, preserving, right. preserving that. Yeah, I think that's probably the thing that S I T I or st sleep that i'm i'm looking at um, and yeah. if if i'm honest with you i think it's just preserving that security and also um that that insecurity of um oh i can't do certain things um, and 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 it's then attached to my sense of security so so that's i guess that's why it it 
competency seems a bit um seems a bit uh difficult right for, for, for me yeah yeah and then the other stuff that you mentioned earlier like not bothering the tribe it does make sense also because like again if you look at back in the, the ancient caveman days like you could imagine that um you know if you make a mistake or you you bother someone that's higher up in the social hierarchy you might get kicked out of the tribe and when you get kicked out of the tribe guess what you're dead <laughs> you know you're just like you know humans are we're like you know in the in the olden days at least we're, we're tribal in nature and like um i've always seen humanity um the reason why humanity has thrived i've always seen it as not being intelligence first but actually intelligence second but the first being cooperation you know it's like cooperation first and then intelligence second um, and then, because honestly, as intelligent you are, humans are frail. So, you know, eventually yeah. you know, like a, a, a wild animal is going to kill you. So, uh, so we need each other essentially, but then now we live in modern age and, you know, it's not that extreme anymore. Um, you can make a lot of mistakes and nothing will happen to you. Um, you can bother people all the, all you want. There's like all these prank videos. Right. And then, and uh, not, nothing really will happen to you. There's really no big consequence. Right. Cause like, if you get kicked out of one tribe, it's so easy to join another tribe. There's so many tribes now. Right. Um, so like, it's never been safer in human history to make mistakes. And yet like this old programming of like being afraid to make a mistake is still there. Uh, and, uh, and you know, you're, you, how do you feel about that? Like knowing that, you can make unlimited mistakes nowadays. And even Gary V, you know, like uh, and lead uh, ENFJ, he actually said, I don't know if you've seen these videos. Uh, do you know who Gary V is? Gary Benderchuk? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he made a video. He was talking about entrepreneurship and he said, never been in human history. Can you keep messing up and have unlimited second chances? Because right. let, let's say you're trying to um, build like an online uh, social media following, for example, right? Um, and uh, you screw up, right? You know, and it's you're not seeing the result that you want, and then you still have to pay rent and all that stuff. He's like, he's never been in human history. You have unlimited tries, uh, to make a mistake. So like the fact that he said that, and he has TI at the bar very bottom, being an ENFJ, um, he's aware. He's aware that you know that the TI it it um you kind of need to shut it down sometimes, and uh, you know, tell tell it, like, hey, you're not gonna die if you make a mistake. You actually have unlimited lives now, you know, like 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 a video game, right? Like you have unlimited continues, you know. So, um, so knowing that, uh, logically, uh, how does that make you feel about it, though? Does that <laughs> does that not change anything, or it's still kind of like difficult because the fact that it's like it's it's your fourth function, yeah, triggering. Uh, mm. can you override the triggering feeling or no? Like, how do you how do you how do you feel about that? Yeah, I think with the uh, with the truth, you can definitely override that that feeling of fear. Um, but yeah, as you said it, I was like, oh yeah, actually, you can make so many mistakes; it doesn't really matter. But in the moment, that's when it that's when it gets that's when it gets tough. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking of like, like instances where I felt like, okay. Um, I don't want to make a mistake and that feeling of fear is like so real it's so real but then if I were to remind myself that actually it doesn't really um, like you're not going to die um, then I guess I guess that's something that I think I have to like create as a habit just to just to remind myself to 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 overcome that feeling right no that that makes a lot of sense and uh i think this is the perfect tie into to your social type um uh, being a number four uh being friends first uh i can see why actually why um this would be extra extra triggering for you uh mm. just because you're not just double activated play you're also friends first uh, so making mistakes with the tribe is like a big no no because you don't want to get kicked out of the tribe. You don't want to yeah up the tribe because you need the tribe. Um, being a number four, you know, like if you are number one and the number one goal is being the best, it's a little bit different, right? You know, like a, a good example of number one ESFJ is Hulk Hogan, right? You know, like he's like all oh, right, 
yeah, you know, like he, you know, he's very selfish and he's screwed over many tribe members for the sake of his ego, right? Uh, mm-hmm. but but then you can't argue with the result also as hor- as horrible as it sounds, because the TI truth is he wouldn't he wouldn't be like the m- most famous, well known um in 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 wrestling and even Hollywood um if he wasn't so selfish, you know, um so you could even look at it from like a self preservation standpoint, like when you're so famous and rich, you cannot be touched, you know, like you have immunity to 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 certain things, you know, um so it's it's uh, it's kind of interesting how there's more than one way to approach um that self preservation thing. You can do it in a jerk way where you're like, I'm going to take from everyone, but gaslight them to thinking I'm helping them with that, you know, SF blast at the NF play. Um, right. You know, um, and I have seen like the social type one ESFJs do that. They'll gaslight. It's like, I've been helping you this whole time, you know, being nice to you and stuff, but it's like fake. It's like the ulterior motive is like, I'm going to get the TI payout in the end, you know, you know, um, so like, like I'll give you, I'll give you a concrete example. You know, our our president in Canada is Justin Trudeau, right? Um, uh, and he's a uh, he's the same type as you, except he's uh okay, except he's an uh, MF. That's the uh, the only difference. Um, okay. So he gets into power, and now he's like, uh, allegedly he's been stealing from the, the government. You know, his net worth skyrocketed to like a hundred mil all of a sudden, uh, and then he has all this documentation where the letters are blocked out, and um. He's giving money to charities, but the charity is paying his family. So it's like a loop, a circular loop thing happening. Um, there's like a huge scandal with it. I don't you've heard of Justin Trudeau, right? Our prime minister. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's like I was like, oh God, like I, I do think he's the number one, actually. Like I was like, oh God, this ESFJ number ones are so manipulative. Like, like, you know, he um said he's always saying nice things uh, on camera, but on the back end with the ST, he's collecting the you know the cash money, right? This SD is like money too, right? So it's like, oh god, you know. So it's like, um, uh, and, and the thing, the crazy thing is, everyone's aware he's doing it, and he's actually gonna get it. He's probably gonna get away with it just because, um, you know, uh, yeah. the prime minister, you know. So, uh, so so, but but he's a number one. He's not a number four like you. So like, do you can you see yourself doing something like that, or not so much? Just because that that there there is a uh, importance with the tribe, you know, being a number four. Yeah, so so with the social types, I'm not too well versed with them, but I did go through like a process of elimination, and yeah, number one for sure. Not in terms of that, and en- number one energy, I don't think I have that. Um, um, and then number two as well, in terms of you know the, it seems like a more entrepreneurial kind of person. I'd like to be that kind of person, but I don't think I. I have that so so yeah just to answer your question with with the Justin Trudeau nah I don't see myself doing that nah um I'm having a hard time kind of understanding what that means for like being a number four right like I know friends are important to me but there's only like it's not like I have a massive French uh, friendship circle I've, I've got a handful of people that I call my close friends um, I feel like number fours are like friend gatherers. Um, but I would also say as part of my own development, just understanding my, I've only got my type in result maybe two weeks ago, last week, um, is to kind of create a new circle of friends here and there and learning about the OPS community, reaching out to Kendrick, um, so so that's kind of like part of my oh okay I see I, I'm allowed to do this <laughs> it's yeah. okay um, so yeah yeah that's yeah. that's what I'm I'm aiming for yeah 100 percent dude yeah I'm so glad you reached out um, and uh, you know not, not just to make friends but I think you, you're also helping the community because uh, you know this your type is not very common and also yeah secondly, it also helps you because um, like one of the criticism I get uh, especially in the past, like Kendrick's interviewing people who just got their type and obviously they're not processed. Like what the heck, what is he doing? And I'm thinking to myself, and I, okay, I'm going to say some stuff that's a little bit offensive. So if you could just, I'm, I'm warning, your, warning your, <laughs> now, just warning your FB, okay. Uh, and I'm just thinking, I'm like, are you dumb? Like I'm just, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about my, my, like uh, my, the people who are critical of like what I'm doing. 
I'm just the, the, my my response is like, are you dumb? Okay, okay, number one, when people come in after, to talk to me after getting their type, there is no better way to process your type than to talk with someone about it, especially someone that interviews a lot of people. And you know, yeah. Uh, so I think like that's a good time for you to actually process your type even faster and like get it and maybe think about areas that you haven't thought about. You know, because I I look at it from different angles. So that's that's benefiting the person I'm interviewing a lot, right? And number two. The purpose of the interview, and you know, I maybe it's the the lead ST that has this criticism, but I, I, the way I think about it is like when when you're watching me interview someone, don't look at don't just listen to the censor words. Look at the vibe of the person that I'm interviewing. You know, that's that's what you're looking for in in the interview. Also, it's like just because the person just got their type and they're not completely processed yet, doesn't change the fact that it doesn't mean that their type changed all of a sudden. They're still this type. And this type has a, sp a specific vibe to them. It's like a flavor, right? You know, like when you talk to someone, they have a flavor, you know, and uh, you're getting a taste of that flavor when you see that person, you know what I mean? So it's like, so that's kind of like how I react to my, uh, the people who are criticized, like Kendrick's not interviewing people who are processed. They sh he should wait until they got their type a a for a year. So at least they know what to say. And I'm like, bro, or if it's a woman, you know, girl, like it's, it's like, yeah, I, I I do follow up interviews too nowadays. So like if I I talk to uh, let's say you, and you know we have all this discussion in, a year from now, uh, let's let's say we do a do a follow up interview, uh, to see like where you are in your journey. Oh my God, you have all these tools now, and then suddenly you know what to work on, right? And then you're more like um, conscious uh, and and more uh, blatant when it comes to you know your self development. So that's a little, just a little bit of a rant there because like I I get that message all the time. I'm like. I'm just face bombing. I'm like, like, you know, I have double feminine NT play, right? So I'm like, and I'm just like kind of like hitting my head and I'm like, how dumb can the can this people be? You know, like no offense. You know, I know that the dumb the word dumb is like uh a sensitive Offensive. word. Yeah, Offensive. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, but I would also say like you're providing a really good platform just to kind of see a catalog of different people. Right. So it's been it's been super helpful just to kind of give you that FE, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, speaking of flavor, since we're talking about flavor, uh, you're double feminine, meaning you're tester and visual, right? So a tester is actually uh, smell, right? Um, so those with a uh, tester tend to attach memories to smell. So like if you smell something, it might bring you back to like a, something that happened to you in the past or some kind of like uh, event with other people like it just reminds you of something can you just share a little bit of that like um, how smell uh, takes you back to like certain nostalgia or certain memories and it doesn't have to be good memory because sometimes it could be a bad memory like something foul that you smelled and reminded <laughs> you of like a uh, situation yeah um actually i i i don't know of any instance where i kind of smelled something and you know it, it took me back okay. anywhere um also with that like the the tester uh, smell I, I i i don't know i i maybe maybe i've forgotten um but i don't i don't like i know that sometimes yeah if there's a if if i'm out and about and i can smell certain plants and stuff they do right. take me back to maybe another location maybe back to Germany or wherever I, I I was in the past, um. But yeah, I, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't relate that to, like the entirety of my memory. Sure, yeah, no worries. Uh, but I'm curious now. Do you think your sexual modality is a little bit off because uh, Dave and Shan um they openly mentioned that they only get sexual modalities about fifty five percent correct um through uh -huh. video video typing because they said it's hard to see on video but they said it's very easy to see when the person when they see the person in person uh so okay do you think you might not be double feminine but instead audio kinesthetic and you know um the, maybe your sense of, of hearing is, is better like when it comes to memories and sound how do you feel about that yeah the, um so i guessed myself as an fm actually but i i don't you're definitely that's, not an FM. <laughs> yeah, I you're don't think that's enough. true. You're not. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think 
again, because I'm looking at FE and the the feelings, and I thought, oh, that's definitely masculine. But um, no, I kind of took that on board in terms of testa, in terms of feeling, in terms of the 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 emotion. Um, but in terms of smell, no, audio for sure not. No. Okay. I see. So I guess by process of elimination, it sounds like uh, again, test, yeah, test their visual. I guess you have a visual memory, then, would you say? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. There's um, it's like tables that I see in my head than than anything. You, Even you when I like make notes, I kind of make notes in kind of like table form just to kind of understand the relationship between certain things. Oh, really? I wonder what that's what ST sleep looks like. It's like a, it's like an Excel spreadsheet, you know, like it's very ST. Yeah. 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 Cause I think FE does look at like the relationship between two things or all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I always kind of have to puzzle piece and um, those things. Yeah. Yeah. So, so okay. I, this is so funny now. This is the first time ever someone has ever um, explained it this way. I, I think this is really cool actually. So when, when you look at like the spectrum of relationships of people in your life, do you put them in this kind of like a, a mental spreadsheet where like, oh, okay, here's the column. These people are friends and these people are our friends. And there's like categories, you know, each column is a category. And then <laughs> like, and there's like different people within the column or, or no, like I'm, I'm curious now. I think with people, I would not do that um, with things for sure. But with people, it's like, there's too much that's kind of like not I, I don't feel like it's right oh, to do that okay just because it's not appropriate doesn't mean it's not happening <laughs> would you, would you say no I, I <laughs> no but for real I, I don't think I feel like that that's a there might be a vibe like I would rate a vibe of a person yeah I would I would be like okay yeah I'm not, not really sure of this vibe and that gets a five of, and oh I like this person that gets a two um but as a whole I don't think I've I died no I've never considered that to be honest okay okay gotcha I'm just curious uh, someone as an FI user uh, the way I see the way I categorize people uh, and I want to hear your version too I you know and don't be afraid don't worry it, yeah it, no so for me I have a bunch of bubbles and uh and the bubbles have like uh different uh, labels on how I perceive people, right? So there's like, you know, um, my closest friends and family member are in one bubble. Okay, and I have people who are like, they're friends in that situation only, like coworkers. They're like my work friends, but they're not my friend outside work. Like I wouldn't hang out with them outside work, but they're friends. I, I see them as a friend at work and at work only, okay? You know, or like, uh, let's say I go to, uh, I don't know, like okay. a or whatever. There's like, they, they're situational friends, okay? Um. And then there's acquaintances, okay, obviously. <clears throat> and then there's people I don't like, you know, but they're necessary in my life. So they have their own container, right? There's And then there's people I just don't, there's people I don't like. And there's the trash bin people in the very bottom. There's like trash can of people I don't like. Like I hate, okay. Or like severely dislike, okay. So, so the trash bin. I, I actually am, I did a meetup in Vancouver with um OPS people. And the funny thing is every single one had FI. And uh, we were talking about FI trash bins and we're like, we're, just, we're sharing like, okay, who is in your FI trash bin in, in the OPS community? And I was like, shit, I don't, I don't mess stuff, but everyone's like telling each other. It's like, oh yeah, this person in this Facebook group, that person's a piece of crap. Like, I'm going to put this person in a trash bin. Like, I didn't say that, but someone else did. And I'm like, mm, interesting, you know, because like, it's like the FI trash bin, right? I know it sounds horrible, but like, it is real, right? So I, I want to hear what your perspective is uh, on this. Like, what is your own version of, of, of that? You know, obviously it doesn't have to be as extreme as like the FI, the, those, S, those FI jerks, you know? <laughs> yeah. Would, would you say you have that framework because of your masculine SI? Like the fact that it's quite firm that you've got this. Because for me, that. it's like. No, you would think that. But the ESFPs, they don't have SI, they have NI, but they have the trash bin too. <laughs> like, I right. Okay. So, okay. It's an FI thing. It's an FI thing. Mm. Yes. I think, because what I would say to that, I just forget. And then I like in the moment, oh yeah, I remember why I don't like you. Like right. these things come up, but they're not kind of solid in, in the sense that, 
you know it's move like you could you could you could be different tomorrow and i'd be like oh okay they, i've noticed a change here and i right. and i like that change or i've noticed a change and i don't like that change um so it's more like i'm remembering why i had that perception about someone before not not necessarily a framework with with people oh okay so it sounds like you're stacking your reasons for for not liking someone like i don't like this person because yeah why z right so yeah 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 okay okay yeah that's true yeah 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 yeah. but then i guess that the fe can sway that ti you know later on like if if uh if the behavior changed you could the ti could be swayed um yeah because i like if i do like if i do decide to not like someone i want to have I want to have evidence. I want to make sure I'm 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 righteous in my decision making in 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 that sense. So, right. So yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah. the, it's just, like we're 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 just jerks. We're like, oh, you look at me funny. I don't like you. You know, it's like it's like, it's like <laughs> not even reasonable. You know, like you know, but sometimes it's just it's just that you know, um, with the FI. So it's it's a uh, FIs are time bombs. I swear to God, you know, like. <laughs> You know, we're not as reasonable as you guys. The 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 FE TIs, you know. Although although I think like TI can be unreasonable too at times, you know. So you know, uh, it's it's not as objective as it seems because um you know with the with the TE uh the good thing about it is you are taking the, like, into account um all the thinking in the tribe, kind of like you you're thinking you're taking into account all the emotions and and whatnot. So that the the, the TE is gathering the all the TIs and all the other TEs. And it's like okay, well based on gathering all this, you know, for you, like with the FE, you know what is uh, socially, appro- uh, socially appropriate, right? You know, in, in a behavior scale. So there is like a socially appropriate uh, being a jerk where it's like, it's still okay. It's still kind of within the, that that range. Yeah. You kind of know when it goes too far. And then there's also like one that's like, you're way too nice. It's it's got, got gone too far. You know, you can't be like that nice, right? You know, so like, I think with the TE, we, we also do that. Something similar as you guys, you know, but it's with, with, that, with, that, with that thought process. So we're like, right. okay, I see, I see what you, I see your reasons, and that that's still within the box, so that's cool. But then we know it's like, oh, this person got to the deep end. That's like that's a that's a messed up reason, you know. So it's, um, or we can also say, oh my god, that's so smart. So it can also go like the opposite, like that is that's definitely smarter than the average, you know. So, um, right, yeah. Trying to figure out if that's similar to me. I don't see. No, like in in terms of like TE spectrum, yeah, r- intelligence. That's where you're you're seeing. Okay, this this person is intelligent or smart or or is is that what you mean? Yeah, I I mean a hundred percent. Like I mean even for competence, like I can kind of do it. I can be like. Like for example, you show me your process, how you're doing something at work, right? Let's say we work in an office and you show me your your process. And then but because I have TE, I'm not like weird about um asking people how how they do their work. Like I know that's really personal to you, right? But like I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be, there. I'll be there. <laughs> But the people with TE, they don't think it's invasive at all. Like if someone goes up to me, it's like, hey, can you show me your process? I'm like, Yeah, sure. I don't care. <laughs> it's not personal. I don't really care. Yeah, here's my process. And then I'm actually like eager to hear get the feedback to make it better, right? You know, where else that like the TISI would be like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is this is a private, bro. Like, what are you doing? You know, like so it's um, you know, but then for us, it, the T get it gets like an extra layer of invasiveness because it's like I'm looking at your ST process and I'm looking at someone else's ST process, and I can I can go up to you and be like the complete jerk that will just ruin your week and be like, you know, sorry, Michael, but um, you know, like let's say like Ben there actually like he, his process is like it's the way to go. Yours is kind of like, eh, you know, and like that that well, will just destroy your week, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think you know if if someone were to ask me um what my process is and I know it it worked, then I'm definitely proud to show it. Like I'd okay. I'd be happy to showcase that. Yeah. Um, it's more so when it's like unwarranted if someone were to just ask me hey what why are you doing this that that would feel like like why yeah what's what's your what's your issue that then i'd feel a bit more um like it's a bit invasive yeah yeah Yeah. and the masculine tees will do that to you so (laughs) right yeah the feminine Uh tees 
will, but it's like it sounds so soft and friendly that it doesn't come across as like as that way, you know. Uh-huh. And it kind of sounds more like, oh, I'm asking you for permission to share with you me what your TI is, which sounds more okay, you know. Kind of like with a feminine FE, they'll go like kind of like you with feminine FE, you know. If you're uh, wondering what my values are, you might be more softer at approach with it, you know, than someone with with the masculine FE is like, oh yeah, you're completely out of line. You need to change your behavior. Like that would be invasive, right? And, I, and then you know my, yeah. my that the, the default reply would be a middle finger and like an F U, right? You know, so um although I I might want to know like why. Like, okay, so why do you think that? Um uh, just just for for reference, because I, I guess if I don't if I don't just wallow in my I'm offended right now, um, I could kind of see if there's any knowledge to be gained from from that feedback oh i think because you have high play and high consume so you're you have more resistance to getting offended by this than than someone that was consumed last you know what i mean yeah I, okay i see yeah because it is like oh i want to gather information i want to yeah, gather yeah, that exactly, knowledge exactly 100 yeah. yeah you're like you're yeah. like a you're like a ve- you're very EP for um an an EJ right like so you are gonna be like yeah yeah very gather heavy you know uh, yeah yeah so I think that's gonna be actually I I feel like for your type specifically I think that's what's gonna get you through life like the best possible way just leaning towards that that that, that gathering because I feel like you can get away with so many uh, so many situations where um. You could feel insecure uh, with the ST. Could be overridden by just gathering, just because you're gathering so much. It's like, and and uh, almost by accident, you you will actually become smarter and more confident because even though you get offended or, uh, you know, on the front end, it it's like oh because you're gonna gather afterwards, <laughs> then you you fix the problem. Where else like someone that has consumed last ESFJ with the NT in the end. They're not even gonna bother doing that, so that they're stuck in this like, OI like uh you know I don't OI loop, which is like, uh they're stuck inside their their, their head, right? Where it's like the does I oh yeah this person thinks I'm stupid, I'm incompetent. Well, I'll show them. I'm gonna rework. Uh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rework this to make it better. But then you know if you don't have new materials to mm-hmm. to build this building, how can it be better? You're just using the old old materials so there's there's nothing new to enhance this this thing that you're this framework that you're building right so in your case you're you keep getting new um frameworks coming in that like new materials that you know at, at the front end you might come across as you know someone that doesn't know what they're doing but over time it you're gonna have so much materials that hey you know what like you're good you know it's gonna be like you know foolproof so, yeah I do think at the front end, it's more like, oh, I actually, you know, the, the the consume is making me a bit more insecure of what I already know, sure. because I feel like there's so much more that I don't know that I need to gather, that I need to understand. So, yeah, when it comes to feedback, for sure, um, I'm more likely to, I might feel offended when it's particularly tackling my my TI but I'm more like, actually, let's see what this person has to say, because maybe that's something I haven't considered. And then when it comes to topics or things or, you know, uh, there it's more like, for, for example, my um, career choice, um, you know, the opportunity to progress, like what what are the things that I need to do? I tend to overthink that. I think I, I tend to think that, okay, I, I don't know where to start. Uh, and there's so much information out there. I need to somehow gather it all to 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 make sense of it, and and then I can make a decision. Did you make yeah. a career path choice already, or are you still stuck in that aspect, or not so much? Well, I've kind of like so. I've been in a I've been in a role. I'm a team leader for um, a um, like a supplement company. Um, and I've been in that role for six years now, but I've been in the same company for 10 years. So I've been in the same location for for a while. And I feel like I should move on. I should progress. But then I'm also like, mm, I don't have 
all of the information that I need to to progress. So, so that's the kind of rot that I'm finding myself in, and trying to figure out, okay, what can I do to to either make myself feel better about it, or actually um, make that next step. Right. Right. Okay. That that makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, maybe the friends going to maybe you 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 vibe with with your coworkers too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's one of the main reasons why why I'm 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 here, yeah. Yeah, cuz you can move to a different company and everyone could be a jerk, right? And then it's like, okay, well, you know, I I I had it good in this other place. Why like why did I switch? You know what I mean? I see now. Okay. Yeah, that's that's helped me out a lot. That's kind of made it a bit more clear. Um Yeah. Cuz you're a decider, right? So that's kind of like the the one of the biggest factor. I I, I would assume, uh, you know, like that. Yeah vibe right like the people so uh if you're already in a good place with good people like why what why would you move it doesn't make sense right you know why don't you just grow with a company right you know and just like find find yeah. a way to to move up the ranks essentially you know what i mean so um, yeah i'll have a question but we'll come to that later because it's yeah, just go. dropped out of my yeah. yeah um so how did you so is that linked to number of being a four that that you know the environment friends right okay yeah because that again like that part i haven't really solidified yet in yeah in in my my understanding yeah you're also a specialist so you you'd like to have a specific task given to you and you want to excel at it although you yeah can, you can do the generalist thing too that's why you're a team leader so you can do broad responsibility so number fours number ones have this ability to um number ones and number fours can essentially uh you know jump between a specialist and someone that is taking a more leadership or managerial role so that's kind of like the superpower of the the ones in the force you know uh while the threes they prefer being a specialist you know um it's not that threes don't become managers they do and they a lot of them are pretty good at it but uh it's just that it's not their preference you know their preference is to Give me, give, give me this one uh, role and I'm going to be the best at it. I'm going to crush everyone in this one role, you know, because they have the ego flex too, right? You know, um, so so in your case, uh, you do have flex, but it, there's no ego attached to it. It's just like, oh, um, I I want to be really good at this uh, just so I, I can feel good about uh, doing good work and also uh, providing the my, my team more value, you know? So it's, it's a little bit different from a, a number number four perspective versus like a number three, you know. Right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Although, although TIs have more egos than FIs, so there is you're you're gonna have more ego with that than that the FI person would, you know. Oh, is that is that based on your observation? How so? Like. Yeah, it's just the... uh, with with um like the, how Dave and Chan define TI. TI TI yeah. definitely has uh, a lot of ego attached to it, you know. Um. You you can you can if you notice it you can obviously sway it away but like you know it's good to be aware you know uh if you're making a decision out of ego or it's because it's actually the right decision right you know yeah yeah so, yeah fair point hmm. okay okay so um I think that's that's the part then where. I, again, I'm looking to develop myself in terms of whether it's my career, whether it's my friendship. Um, I think just seeing that my main motivation is is the people that I'm around um, um, and also having an element of peace and quiet. Because that's the other thing that I wanted to say as well is, is that I didn't expect to be play first. I just, I, I just didn't. Um, I think I probably said I was play last. Um, but then, yeah, just coming to that acceptance piece, uh, part that actually no, that all day every day there's 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 a uh, fe any going on right. um, is is uh, is quite. It's yeah, it's it's quite weird to 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 notice that in myself now. So now noticing that I'm 
I'm actually so focused and, you know, looking at my friendship circle, looking at my environment, also, you know, knowing to make a decision out of, not out of ego, but, but a, a, a true decision. That's another, I guess, coin that I, that I, that I want to look into yeah. and incorporate. Yeah. 100%, dude. 100%. Um, I think the other thing too, I think like when you're thinking about play, you might be thinking about someone high energy. Uh, you might be picking. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing that you have to keep in mind um, is your info dom. Okay. You're not mm. energy dom. You have blast and consume in your first three animals. So info doms tend to be more serious than those who are energy dom. Energy dom are goofy. So when you see someone like having those big extroverted, um, you know, playful uh, mannerism, you're probably seeing someone with that is energy dom. Uh, the info doms, as mentioned, like, especially if you're, like, for us, we're lead play. So if we know that inter interaction needs some energy, we can use the play to inject energy into it. Um, but once the energy is in, we go back to information because that, that's what we want. We want to have a back and forth with information. Um, you can see this very clearly with my interview with Samuel and Lauren. So they're both ESTPs. One is uh, Lauren was an ESTP standard and Samuel was an ESTP jumper and uh lauren was uh sleep oh no she was energy dom and then samuel was uh, uh sleep last so he's info dom and i can see him when when he noticed that the interaction is starting to kind of drop down in energy he'll inject enough energy to make lauren like giggle to boost up the energy a little bit and after that that's up he'll go back to the info again because because he's an uh, info okay. dom he wants the information right so i i thought that was <laughs> Uh, you know, and I was watching that happen. I was like, oh, so this, this is what I mean to when people are saying, oh, Kendrick, you shouldn't interview people who just got typed. I'm like, dude, like, like watch the vibe. Look, look, like, just pay attention to what's actually happening. Like, don't, don't look at the, don't just listen to the words. Like, look at what's happening. Like, I, don't, I bet people, some people didn't catch that, right? You know, yeah. but, but I saw that. I caught that. You know, I saw that happening. I didn't say anything. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think I would catch that either. I think I would be so focused on the information. That, yeah. that was given and yeah yeah but well, that's interesting but the fact yeah. that your energy your, the fact that you your first animal is energy which is play and then you have your information animal the consume and the blast in the middle uh yeah. you have enough energy animal to see the energy also shifting it's it's not just the um what am i call it not just information so you have enough <laughs> you have enough right because you're not you're not play last the play last have absolutely have they can't even see it. It's it's so difficult for them. Right. You know, uh, that's why you know um, a lot of the play last interviewer like uh, Tim Ferriss, for example. Like I'm like I'm a lot of times I'm dying. It's so boring. His information are so good, but my God, I'm like, dude, the like the, the don't you see the vibe here? Like it's so dry. Can you please inject right. a little bit of energy to this interaction? Just a little bit. I'm not asking for a lot. You know, I, I'm pretty sure what you have is gold because. Obviously, double activated sleep. You're very well processed. Blast and consume is activated, so your information is rock solid. But it's hard for people to digest that information if not presented correctly. You know, so uh, right. You get what I'm trying to say, right? <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, but uh, so how do you see like someone like Jordan Peterson, for example? Uh, he's sleep last, cause... so he can do the play. So right, okay. Yeah, because I, I, I would say, um, um, what was the guy that you just mentioned earlier? SI. What was the guy, uh, the uh, play last? Oh, Tim Ferriss, the INTJ guy? Tim Ferriss, yes. Because yeah. he, he's the one that wrote the four-hour work week, right? Right, yeah, that's the guy, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, 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 to be honest, I probably have never heard him speak before, but in terms of the content. No, his, love it. his books are chef's kiss. So yeah. I think the, the, the double activated sleeps, I, I gladly read your book because I don't have yeah. to hear you talk. No, that's okay. Oh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just messing that. <laughs> but uh, no, not, not all play last people are like that, by the way. Because yeah, I, every animal has different dimensions. So some play last people can inject energy. Some can't. It it really depends. Like some some play last people can inject energy. 
but they can't, um, they don't trust the tribe, for example, for, with their information, you know? Uh, so there's different aspects of what's missing for every every type. So just because you're a certain type right now, and one day they'll have another ESFJ, play consume, blast sleep, uh, double feminine, social type number four, come through, and they'll be different from you. Mm -hmm. uh, just because, you know, what's missing in their sleep blast is going to be different from what's missing in your sleep blast, right? And then, yeah, and also the environment plays a, a big factor. So, you know, yeah. So, yeah um so michael um i gotta wrap up this interview because um yeah they're gonna kick me out of my accommodation so um <laughs> I think I only have like a, and you got a flight to catch I, my flight's still later but um my i have to check they my, they told me my checkout is at 11 a.m it's already 10 15 a.m here so i'm like ah Oof. i gotta pack up my stuff and uh head to the lobby and i'm just gonna hang on the lobby until it's time to go to the airport so um yeah anyways I appreciate you coming out and sharing more about yourself and uh, thank your you. Life. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, Kendrick. Been been great. Yeah. yeah, thank you. All right, take care. Enjoy the rest of your evening. All right, you too. Take care. Bye.